Elon Musk was not shy about making bold claims on the capabilities of his Tesla bot humanoid robot, chief among them being his belief that an economy driven by worker droids will make possible a future where there is no poverty among humans. A world of abundance where everyone can have everything that they want in terms of products and services. This would be a fundamental transformation of civilization as we know it, and I think we can all agree that it would be a change in a positive direction. The basic theory underlying this idea is that the size of the economy is determined by the number of productive entities multiplied by their productivity. So in order for the economy to grow perpetually, we would require an equivalent growth in productivity. Humans have limitations on productivity and reproduction that robots don't suffer from. So if productivity is limitless, then the economy by extension will be as well. That sounds like very wishful thinking and it is, but Tesla is starting on the path towards that goal regardless. So let's talk about how the Tesla bot is going to accomplish the most ambitious plan in history. So Tesla AI Day 2022 brought us our first look at the functional Tesla bot. Well, two of them really, or like one and a half. So we did see a robot walk across the stage and do a little dance, but it was kind of janky looking. Tesla confirmed that this is simply their test candidate. They built a functional human shaped robot with commonly available parts as quickly as possible so that they would have a vehicle to start developing and testing their software. The first prototype was nicknamed Bumble C, another Transformers reference, and an admission that this is not even a B grade robot. It's a firm C, but this gives them something to work with while they put their effort into the real deal. We got a taste of the real Optimus at AI Day. It couldn't walk or barely even stand on its own and had very limited movement, but this one looked a lot better and Elon confirmed that this is pretty close to what the first production robot will look like. So the ultra slender design from the very first AI concept is gone. This new Optimus is chunky and that's perfectly fine. It always seemed unlikely that Tesla could fit a functional robot into such a slim frame. I think with the first bot concept, they were trying to stress the fact that this was not supposed to be dangerous or intimidating. Every aspect of the Tesla bot is designed for optimized cost and efficiency. That means reducing the part count and power consumption down to its bare minimum. The power source for the bot is a 2.3 kilowatt hour Tesla battery pack, which is enough energy for a full day of activity. This is a fully integrated battery unit, so power distribution, cooling, and battery management are all integrated into the pack. This keeps the bulk of the weight right in the middle of the robot. Tesla is leveraging their existing products and supply chain to build this miniature battery pack. The central computer is also located in the torso, the brain is in the chest, not the head, and again, that's to centralize the weight. This is powered by Tesla's FSD computer, the same one that is in every Tesla vehicle with a few minor changes to form factor and functionality, but this computer is already designed to do everything that a human brain does. That's how it drives a car, processing vision data and making split second decisions based on multiple sensor inputs. The updated bot design uses 28 structural actuators, which is actually down from the original concept last year that had estimated 40 actuators. Most of the movements were simply inspired by nature. The knee joint of the Tesla bot is a copy of a human knee joint. The bot hands use mechanical spring-loaded tendons, the same as our own hands use muscle tendons. Nature has done a pretty good job of optimizing us over millions of years of evolution. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The engineers stressed many times that the priority here is to make a robot that can be manufactured cheaply and quickly. So they don't have the luxury of using exotic materials like carbon fiber and titanium. The bot has to be sturdy enough with mostly plastic and aluminum parts. So they have to keep energy exertion at a minimum and reduce mechanical stress wherever possible. Because of this, 
we'll never see a Tesla bot doing backflips. It's going to appear very boring. It does not have to be extraordinary, but it does have to be useful and functional with a design that can be built in a factory at high volumes. What Optimus lacks in athletic ability, it will more than make up for with intelligence and versatility. And that's where the Tesla bot starts to pull away from the competition. As Elon said, other humanoid robots are missing a brain. They may be able to do parkour, but they cannot navigate the world autonomously. All humanoid robots so far have been very expensive and therefore only produced at low volume. Optimus has lower capability, but that allows for higher volume and that means the price will come down. Elon puts the cost of a Tesla bot at around 20,000 US dollars. So that's the real key takeaway from all of this. The robot demonstration is just eye candy, but there's not much substance to that right now. We've all seen walking robots before, it's not really a big deal. But the idea that you could own your very own walking robot, it would come with the ability to operate independently, to use tools and complete tasks, and do useful things that you ask it to do for just 20 grand? It's not a small amount of money, but we have to remember that productivity is equal to money. And just think about how much more productive you could be if you had this robot helping you out in your day-to-day -day life. Could a Tesla bot actually turn a profit in the long run? I mean, I don't see why not. So it's also an investment, not just an expense. The key to the Tesla bot's usefulness is its brain. Again, this is the same computer brain that goes in every Tesla vehicle and allows the car to drive semi-autonomously. At the moment, with FSD beta, the car can drive itself through pretty much any situation. Maybe not perfectly, but it's getting there. So the car itself is already a robot with an artificial intelligence that navigates with computer vision. That aspect of autopilot ported over directly to the bot. The biggest changes that were required came with the transition from wheels to legs. There are a couple of factors that a walking robot needs to deal with that the car does not. And that's things like step placement and balance. These are difficult and something that the team is still working on. They're currently using the autopilot simulator to train the bot's locomotion planner. They are also taking motion capture data from real people and then mapping those keyframes over to the bot and training it on real human movement. Now, this is going to take a while. What is working very well on the Tesla bot is the computer vision system. Tesla showed us how the bot uses three cameras to navigate the world and complete simple tasks. So just like the Tesla vehicle, the FSD computer in the bot is taking camera input and converting that into a three-dimensional digital rendering made up of voxels. Those are three-dimensional pixels. And then navigating through the digital world. The computer can accurately judge distance, size, and velocity just by counting voxels. Another layer to the vision system is object recognition. So the same way that the car can recognize and differentiate between a pedestrian, a dog, a cyclist, a car, and a bus, the bot can recognize and differentiate objects in the real world. We saw the watering can and the plants, but in theory, it can identify any object that is trained into the neural net. There is also a very sophisticated edge detection going on here. So in a car, the FSD computer has the advantage of GPS. This shows the car exactly where the road is, and it knows what paths are available to drive on. Trying to navigate through an interior space, there is no set path. So the bot has to be able to improvise and find its own way through an environment. It does this by detecting edges and high frequency patterns, and it knows that the spaces in between the edges is where it will be safe to walk. So how does this all come back to ending poverty and giving every person unlimited wealth? Well, we just need to think about the number of bots multiplied by their productivity. This is why Elon and his team are stressing that Optimus is designed to be cheap and easy to build. The goal here is to make a useful humanoid robot as quickly as possible, designed for manufacturing at high volume with a low cost and high degree of reliability. Elon is talking about building these robots by the millions, eventually at a higher volume than Tesla vehicles, which 
are reaching into several million units per year and rising fast. So there are going to be a lot of robots, more than enough. And when we just multiply that very high number by the productivity of a robot, that is yet to be realized, but when you think about it, you have a droid that is purpose-built to do work, complete tasks that are boring, repetitive, and dangerous. They don't need to be programmed or remote controlled. You just tell them what to do and send them on their way. The bot will function autonomously and it will work until it either finishes the task or the battery runs out. Elon theorized that self-driving cars can improve the productivity of transportation by one order of magnitude. Elon is thinking that the Tesla bot can offer an improvement to the economic output by two orders of magnitude. The United States GDP in 2020 was just over $20 trillion. So one order of magnitude would increase that to $200 trillion. A second order of magnitude would be $2,000 trillion. So this is the calculation that Elon is basing his future utopia of unlimited wealth and abundance. And if his math is correct and his robot lives up to the hype, then yeah, he's totally right. There would be more capital than anyone would know what to do with. In reality, we have no idea what effect that might have on the economy or the global standard of living. But it's probably worth finding out, and it looks like we will. Elon stresses that this fundamental change needs to be done the right way, carefully and safely, to make sure that the outcome is beneficial to civilization and the outcome that humanity actually wants. Elon also followed up this talk with a Twitter exchange where he acknowledged that even if the Tesla bot can make life better in the long term, we still have a lot of very hard work to do in the short term. This does not happen overnight, but it could happen someday. The wheels are in motion. All we can really say definitively is that this technology is going to be very interesting to watch over the next five to 10 years. That's when we are really, truly, going to see what AI-driven autonomous robots can achieve. And that's something to look forward to. There are so many technologies in our world that have kind of plateaued. Try and remember the last time you got really excited by a new smartphone or device. Electric cars have kind of leveled off as well. We're not seeing big breakthroughs or game-changing new tech. But the world of AI and robotics is just getting started. This is where the action is going to happen in the next decade, and we're pretty excited to see where things go. What do you expect we're going to see though? Is the Tesla bot the secret to unlimited wealth, or is this all a techno pipe dream? Drop your thoughts down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.